Hi, so today in STATS we learned how to do the data analysis platform and I think that I'd like to reiterate some of the lessons we had or maybe we rushed through and I want to make sure that all of you got the, the information I wanted to communicate to you. So we're going to do it again and now you have this video at your fingertips to, to play around with. So I'm just going to start from scratch and create a new data set. I'll try to remember what numbers we used in class. So I'm going to go over here to my new workbook in Excel and we'll just call the data cats like we did in class. I'll try to remember what kind of numbers we had for people who said how many cats they own but I have to be honest I don't remember. Let's just pretend that's it. If you're trying to follow along at home on your computer um, the data are 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 2. All right, so that's let's just say we um, asked seven participants how many cats they owned, and these are the data that they gave us. So how we moved forward from here, we are going to go up to the top of your screen, or uh, in your Excel, and click on the data tab. Now that was already clicked on for me because it's naturally there, but it might normally be on your home tab. Then you're going to go scroll over, click on the data tab. Once you've done that, you'll see at the very end your data analysis platform has been loaded. Now if you don't have it loaded at home yet, go ahead and check out one of the guides I posted in our course website that will teach you how to get that loaded there. So I'm going to click on that and we're going to click on descriptive statistics. I just realized normally this is um, blank, but I was messing around with it, so it of course has stuff in there, so just ignore that. <laughs> this will be how it looks for you. Okay, so when you're entering data into the data analysis tab, you don't highlight the data and then click on data analysis. You just click on data analysis and you start fresh from here. So from this window, we want to tell Excel what uh, numbers we want it to analyze. By, we do this by clicking on this little red arrow in the input range. Once you click that, this screen minimizes so that you can more easily find your data. I'm going to scroll over here and click and drag like I'm highlighting cats all the way down to the last number, which in my case is 2. So you can see I've gone from A1 to A8. Um, you see that also written here. It, it automatically wrote A1 to A8. So if you're more um, keyboard friendly instead of mouse friendly, you could have typed in A1 colon A8 and that would have also worked. Most of us like our mice. Mouses? Mice. Mouse. Most of us like to use our mouse. All right, so then we are going to um, click on the little red arrow again to bring back the screen so we can make more entries. Um, if you are using your keyboard, you can also hit enter. Now I have the screen, I want to make a few edits before I click OK. First, you'll notice that I grabbed the word cats while grabbing my data. This is a very good habit to get into. Right now I'm just analyzing cats, so that's no big deal. But later we're going to be doing more and more sophisticated analyses and I might be comparing cats and dogs and all these kinds of things. So it's a good habit to label those so you know what you're looking at. But since I did put the label in the first row, I have to let Excel know that, that the cat is not an actual response, but it's the label of the responses. So I'm going to go ahead and click labels in the first row. The next thing is I want to tell Excel where to give me that output. These three options are for that. Now, I would um, encourage you to stick with the default, which is the new worksheet ply. What that means is a new worksheet is going to fall at the bottom of your page down here. Now if you don't give it a name, it'll give you a worksheet that's the next number. So I have three sheets here, so it would be sheet four. If I ran it again, I'd get sheet five or sheet six. I'm going to go ahead and give it a name because I like labeling things. Since I'm doing the cat analysis, I'll call this cat data. So now a new worksheet is going to fly down to the bottom of this and it's going to be called cat data. The reason they call it worksheets is imagine you have sheets of paper kind of bound together. And so this file has one sheet with the data uh, numbers on it and another worksheet with the output. If you were to select new workbook, it would send your output to a whole nother Excel file. That can get confusing. You have one file with data and one with results. That might work for you, but I would encourage you if you're not Excel savvy and don't want to mess around with the settings, it's most intuitive to just have it add another sheet to an existing file. If you are computer savvy and want to play around, you could put uh, select output range. If you select output range, you can use the same red arrow feature to tell Excel where you'd like the output to be. So what I'm doing here is saying put the output 
starting right here and it'll it'll fill the page here with the data um, output again I would encourage you to stick with the default because it seems to be the most intuitive way to do it so we're gonna do that in this example last thing before you can click OK um, go ahead and uh, click on summary statistics if you clicked OK before that Excel will give you a warning and say hey you forgot to tell me what to do so now uh, we are saying "Oh, I'm sorry Excel please do the summary statistics which you know as descriptive statistics so I'm gonna click OK notice it's automatically sent me to my cat data worksheet so we are going to uh, talk about what the results were I'm sure you're far impressed with what we got the first thing I want to mention is all the words are scrunched over in the A column so let's go ahead and make the A column bigger so that we can read all these words what you will want to do is take your cursor and put it between A and B so when it turns into a double black arrow from a, a single arrow to a double black arrow that's when you can click and drag now you can drag the column to be as big as you want or if it's a double black arrow if you double click 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 it will go to the longest length it needs to be so that's nice to to mess around with that if I'm going to mess with the B column where all of the numbers are I want you to see how the numbers keep an eye on this cell how the numbers change as Excel rounds the numbers with me so it's rounding and then it's not and see how it's trying to anticipate sorry I moved it so just keep that in mind if you're looking at a number that's slightly different than my number it may be because my column is not as wide as yours or vice versa okay so let's talk about the impressive numbers that we've gotten so the mean we now see that there's a mean of 0.57 cats that's pretty interesting um, standard error is something that we'll be using in the next few weeks so go ahead and just make a mental note that it's there but we won't be using it right now but you know the median and the mode so there are those first three measures of central tendency you have those given to you right away now this says a median of zero do you think that means there is no median and that's what Excel is trying to tell you no it's telling you that the median is in fact the number zero so I want you to keep in mind that if there are no data Excel will tell you that with words not with the number zero zero is an actual piece of data so if we think about ordering our data we had zeros and ones and twos this means that we went zero 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 one one two zero was a number where half the numbers were on the left and half the numbers were on the right and that's what the median is so we're it is saying that zero was in that halfway place mode was the most common number so that's why it's saying zero if there were no mode it would say na or not applicable um, so that's your clue that the mode is actually the number zero and not that there was no mode now the only important note I want to make here about Excel or the uh, data analysis platform is that if you have more than one mode um, only the first one will be reported here so uh, the data analysis can't handle like multimodal distributions that means if I ask you what is the mode and you plug the numbers into Excel and it gives you zero you may want to go back and look at your data set and see if there was another number equally represented that may have been left out of that report that's on you now um, most often there is just a single mode but you want to make sure you're looking at your data as you're um, generating these kinds of results well, now we can look and we see we have standard deviation that was the thing that we learned today and uh, I hope you're impressed that it went ahead and crunched all those numbers for you now it just says standard deviation it doesn't say sample or population so you have to decide whether you th what you think Excel is giving to you you can take a minute to think about that do you think Excel believes you went out and recorded the entire population for the data you're interested in or do you think it's more likely that you went and grabbed a sample and are now trying to glean sample information so hopefully you guessed it was sample it's unlikely that you have an entire population at your fingertips sometimes we do and I'm going to teach you how to get sample standard deviation and oh, sorry population standard deviation and population variance from Excel but that's another day so just keep in mind data analysis platform defaults to all sample information so this is the sample standard deviation and then right below it is the sample variance and they go ahead and label sample variance for you here that's nice of them if you wanted to double check Excel you could take this number 0.619 and square root it and you'll end up with this number 0.7867 blah 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 so you could double check Excel I promise you it works out the variance 
If you square root it, you will get the standard deviation. Well, let's talk about the other numbers that are here. Kurtosis, that's about how curvy a distribution is. That's um, interesting. At this point in time, I'm not going to ask you to, to master that. Just keep in mind that's uh, just a, an interesting number. Describing the distribution, remember we have the mean telling us where the distribution is plunked, and then the standard deviation is telling us how fat or how wide and skinny it is, and kurtosis is telling us how curvy it is. Skewness is a number we've talked about, and so it is giving you a, a number to represent the skewness. And one thing I want to point out is, while you might not know how to interpret the number, you can try to make a guess about whether it was positively or negatively skewed by looking at that number. So it says 1.11, but it's a positive 1.11, so it is a positive skew. Now let's think about that and look back at our data. I'm going to go ahead and look back at my data by going down to the bottom of the screen and clicking on sheet 1, because that's where my data was. Um, so if we look at this, if we had put these in order, it would have been, looks like four zeros, zero, 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 one, one, two. So if you're looking at that, the zeros and the ones all seem to be very similar to each other. It's the two that seems to be a little bit different than the rest of the cluster of data. So it's that two that is pulling the mean up and making it a positive skew. So remember, when you're looking for skew, if you want to eyeball it, you look for the oddball numbers those that may be pulling the mean one direction. And, and if it's more positive than the primary cluster, then it's a positive skew. If it's smaller than the main cluster of points, then it would be a negative skew. So you see it here eyeballing it, and now you can go back to your data analysis output and see that the number represents that here. So if it had been a negative skew, that would have said negative 1.11, or whatever the number would be. So the, the positive and negativeness of the skew report gives you that information. All right, so we also have the range, which was the smallest number, or the biggest number minus the smallest number. That was two. Then it actually gives you the smallest number and the biggest number, and the sum of all the numbers in case you wanted to double check. The one thing I do want to point out with uh, point out is that the count is a nice place to pause and make sure you have all your data. So if I say here are seven data points, do the descriptive statistics, make sure this says seven. If it says six, then you'll know you did something wrong. You didn't grab all the data or you labeled something strange or whatever the, the case may be. So if I give you 10 data points, make sure this count says 10. It's just a nice way to double check yourself. But otherwise, this is all that you need really to move forward on many, many things. I hope you're greatly impressed with it. We'll keep moving forward from here next week, but I wanted to make sure you had an opportunity to kind of see this without being rushed. And uh, you can definitely email me any questions you might have as you think of them. All right, have a great weekend. I'll see you on Monday.